You've probably realized already that what type of information, how it's arranged, and how it's delivered are mostly independent of each other. You can have a scholarly article that's delivered in print or online. You can have a reference item that's text or video. Things used to be a lot more rigid back when everything had to be print. And there's a legacy left over from those times that's important to understand because it gives you an idea of where to look for certain kinds of information. Think about scholars back in 16th century Europe. And it happened in other parts of the world at other times, too, but Enlightenment Europe is what set the pattern for modern publishing in universities. Scientists and humanists were doing their research and they needed to share it with one another, engage in a conversation with one another, to connect and build upon what they were learning. The first thing that happened was that researchers started writing to each other, not just personal letters, but letters that they'd circulate among the whole research community to share, argue about, and build upon ideas. This gave birth to conferences and journals. A conference is where those scholars all travel to one place to present their latest research and speculative ideas to one another and also discuss and argue about those new ideas and connect them up with existing knowledge and with other new ideas. A journal is both an organization and a publication. Researchers would write up their research and submit it to the journal. And the journal would, if it met the strict criteria, publish articles from multiple researchers and issues that came out every few months to a year and subscribers would receive a copy. Monographs are longer publications, which cover more ground than journal articles anyway, and they are longer and take longer to write and publish. Reference books and textbooks are also long-standing ways for existing knowledge to be gathered together for people's convenience. So we have these pre-existing information source types and along comes modern technology. So what implications does that have? Well, online resources can be accessed by multiple people at one time. They let you search the content, jump around in the content using links. They often give you a way to interact with other people who are using the content. And the process of publishing online doesn't take as long or cost as much as physical publishing. In fact, it's possible for individuals to do it at home. So now you've got a situation where we still have these legacy information source types, journal articles, monographs, conference papers, reference books, but they're being remixed in a number of ways. First, they're not only being published as physical versions, but also online. And when they go online, they take advantage of what that delivery method allows. Searching, linking, instant interaction with the other users, sometimes even adding and altering content for your own needs. Not only being published by journals and publishers, but also by individuals, corporations, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, NGOs, etc. Not only being published for scholar scholarly reasons, but scholarly looking things, being put out there for commercial or ideological purposes. And not only being found through a college library, but also articles and conference papers found via Google Scholar, statistics and reports via Google, conference presentations via YouTube. There's just a lot more information and a lot more kinds of information. And all the old rules about using library resources have become much more complicated and situational.